Uh, for what? Target areas for what? For FinCEN's investment. For yes. For, we're talking about uh, uh, real estate purchases. Ah, uh, for, for real estate purchases. They, I mean, they've proposed a rule um, on real estate purchases that um, would enable us to have better insight into um, areas where there may be illicit finance. We think that's a, an area that is um, being used to channel illicit funds. I, I agree, but I, I, I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to find out, find out uh, the, the, why the areas that have been selected were selected. The 14 uh, uh, areas. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, you're talking about geographic targeting orders. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. That there were, four, I think, 14 areas that were, yes. were selected. And I, I need to get back to you with the logic of uh, why those areas were okay. selected. Well, and I'm, I'm maybe even more concerned about the areas that were not selected because it seems to me that if we, you know, uh, if, if we're, if we're uh, dealing with these 14 uh, areas, um, if I were a bad actor, I just simply move to another. I, I mean, I target another area. Uh, so um, they have proposed a broader real estate rule that would would go beyond those universal. Geographic. Yes. Um, I, I, but thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, the, the the other uh, uh, question about that is in in, in uh, 2021, F FinCEN put forward an advance notice of a proposed rule to consider how best uh, to focus its regulatory attention on residential and commercial uh, real estate transactions. Uh, if you if you have that information, I'm interested in the timeline uh, for the rulemaking uh, and. Uh, and whether Treasury is, is going to uh, address both residential and commercial. FinCEN is very actively working on those, on those rules, trying to get them out to, um, to um, make the, the database available. And I can't give you exact timing on it, but it is a very high priority item for FinCEN. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Thank you for being here today. Oh, wow, friends. This is serious news. White House economists have just announced that inflation is worse in the United States than many other countries. This could mean that the next cost of living adjustment for Social Security recipients may be larger than expected, as much as $100. So, dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video for all of the latest news. Also, tomorrow, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. My dear friends, please make sure that you enter the giveaway by clicking and liking several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on, my friends, the greater your chances of winning the weekly giveaways. It is no secret that your retirement location can significantly affect your retirement costs. An individual retiring in Santa Monica, California will likely need more money than someone retiring in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. That part of retirement expenses is straightforward, but your retirement income could also be affected especially when it comes to Social Security. For many Americans, Social Security accounts for a good portion of their retirement income. Unfortunately, retirees in these 12 states should be aware they could end up giving some of that money back to the government. The not-so-good news is that there are 12 states that could potentially tax at least a portion of your Social Security benefits under certain circumstances. This includes Colorado, Connecticut, Kansas, Minnesota, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, New Mexico, Rhode Island, Utah, Vermont, 
and West Virginia. The good news, friends, is that 38 states do not tax Social Security benefits at all. Although 12 states may possibly tax your Social Security benefits, it is not guaranteed that they will. Each state has its respective rules about who it taxes and how much. For example, in the state of Colorado, retirees age 65 and older can fully reduct Social Security benefits from their state income tax. However, beneficiaries 55 to 64 years old must pay a 4.4 tax on any retirement income over $20,000 a year, including Social Security. The state of Kansas, on the other hand, has it set so only retirees with an adjusted gross income over $75,000 will pay taxes. So in the above scenario, a 66-year-old retiree with an AGI of $80,000 would owe taxes on Social Security if they lived in Kansas, but not if they lived in Colorado. Conversely, a 63-year-old retiree with an AGI of $60,000 could potentially owe taxes in Colorado, but not in Kansas. So next year's Social Security cost of living adjustment will likely be more than two-thirds smaller than the increase that seniors enjoyed in 2023. The Senior Citizens League now estimates that the Social Security cost of living adjustment for 2024 could be 2.7%. It is based on inflation data that was recently released. The 8.7% increase in benefits that seniors received this year was the biggest increase in four decades and raised the average retiree benefit by more than $140 per month. The smaller COLA may not be enough for more than 70 million retired senior citizens and disabled workers who are still struggling with rising prices. It is a persistent problem with how COLAs are measured. So friends, it's important to keep in mind that consumer prices actually have to be higher than a year ago for there to be any COLA payable at all. The fact that experts are forecasting 2.7% is an indication that costs are still higher than last year. Slowing the rate of inflation simply means that prices are not increasing as fast as one year ago. According to a new analysis from White House economists, the United States is recovering faster than its peers from the historic bout of inflation that has been squeezing millions of Americans. Inflation remains much higher than economists or American families would like. It is a large part of the reason why President Biden's approval ratings on the economy and overall have remained lackluster. Yet economists say that the cost of living crisis is a global phenomenon, largely brought on by factors outside of politicians' control. And the problem is much worse in other major economies. The Council of Economic Advisors report found that annual inflation peaked earlier in the United States and is now lower than that of any other G7 country. The inflation gauge is now below 3% in the United States, which is significantly cooler than any other nation in the G7, which includes Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, and the United Kingdom. High inflation is a major reason that Americans give the president poor marks on the economy. Despite historically low unemployment, and a boom in clean energy and manufacturing. A recent Gallup poll found that just 35% of Americans have a great deal or fair amount of confidence on the Biden economy, nearly matching the record low under George W. Bush in 2008. So dear friends, what are your thoughts about inflation here in the United States? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Well, my magnificent and most marvelous friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Thursday. 
My dearest friends, I will be announcing several winners tomorrow for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.